Good afternoon, welcome home to Mailer's Landing. It is super steamy out here. It finally stopped raining and we've got sun off and on. I think we've been promised two whole days of this and I wanna take advantage of it. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of stuff happening in the garden that I've been waiting for a clear day to just sort of get on top of. Thing number one, the peas are done. So let me get you in here so you can see what's going on. The snap peas over here and on the other side as well, they are having their last hurrah. And so there's a bunch of little tiny ones coming in. All these little tiny peas, um, but they're probably not going to ripen before the pea vines die. So I'm just bringing them in and then we'll snack on them. Um, Cause even when they're still a little bit flat, they're still good. <laughs> mm. But the king cut peas and the English shelling peas are definitely 100% done. It is time to bring these down. Let me show you what's going on. <laughs> Let me show you what's going on because there's other stuff coming in. So we need to take down the peas in order to let that stuff vine up. Let's take a look. You can see these are, these are done. Stuff is starting to just die on the vine. There's very little here that can be recouped, but we'll pull, we'll pull what we can and then get these. We'll get these off the trellis. But you can see over here, there are cucumbers coming in and oh, there's even a tiny cucumber there. We don't want to mess things up while we pull the peas out. So we're going to be, I'm going to be real careful when I do that. Oh my goodness. Look at the size of that one. Must have been hiding in there for a little while. So I'm going to take out these peas being really, really careful not to disturb the cucumbers because look at this. You see that? Ooh, baby. Look at this. What do you think? I'm going to tuck it back in. Oh, there are a few of them like that. Here, what the hell? Why not? And again, I'm being super careful because cucumbers. Because cucumbers. So there's the first trellis all done. And we've got room in here for these beautiful cucumbers that are already starting to produce a little bit. Ah, so excited about these. So this next one I think is gonna be more challenging and less challenging. More challenging because there's more of it, but less challenging because I put in some rich sweetness melons on the sides of this one, but they did not germinate, so I can be less careful. <laughs> so you wanna see something really cool? Come on over, let me show you something really cool. It looks like a few of these melons actually did pop up. So there's one right here. This little guy made it. And then there are two on the other side. One looks way better than the other. There's this one down here. And this little guy doesn't look so good. Yeah, this, this little guy rotted out at the bottom. I'm gonna stick it back in and hope for the best, but I don't, I don't really see much happening there. Also, the Blue Lake pole beans are starting to produce. Oh my 
my goodness, look at these. There's peas. <gasps> I think he's shouting at me. I really think he's shouting at me. I think it bothers him that I'm out of here. <laughs> oh my goodness, noisy bird. So we've got this all emptied. The trellis on that side, we've already got cucumbers coming in and they look great. This middle one, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet. There's some, uh, there are, I think, two and a half because one of them I'm pretty sure is gonna die. Rich sweetness melon plants that are coming in. Um, so I'm gonna let them be. I think I'm gonna plant some more melons, just direct sow them down that row and see what we can do. And then the other trellis, the Blue Lake pole beans are already starting to succeed and I am so excited about it. Um, but I've also got some other empty spaces. I'm gonna pull the last of the spinach. It all bolted really, really early and I've <laughs> only been feeding the chickens from it at this point. Uh, so I'm probably just going to uproot the rest of it and feed the chickens with it. Maybe that'll make Zuzu happy and he'll stop yelling at me. Um, so these should start to fill up as the season progresses. And I'm really, really excited about that. So let's see how it goes. I've got a couple of things coming in in the garden that I have got to show you. It is so weird and yet so super cool. I have a handful of plants that are twisty. Take a look at this borage. It's not just falling over. There's also a marigold. Check out the twisty on this marigold. And there's a tomatillo. This guy. Look at that. It's close enough to the ground. It's putting out roots. So I'm probably gonna do a little something with that, mound up some dirt under it so that it can reach the ground. And I'll probably do that this afternoon or tomorrow morning. And there's also this tomato plant. So just that scant handful of plants grew up with that weird bend. And the more I looked at them, the more I realized that they were all the same bend. And I was like, what is going on here? And then I took a look at the tree line. So look at how varied it is. So really basically what happened was the tree line and the sun came into play and then the plants have been because of where they are in their spots in the garden they've been bobbing and weaving to get the light and between the rain and the weird weather patterns it's grown in these twisting patterns as it's following the light it's just so cool Good morning, it's tomorrow. <laughs> I couldn't stay out here yesterday in the heat. There was just no way that that was gonna happen. So, on the other hand, it's 5.30 and it is like 60 something degrees and I am so into this. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, the heat chased me inside. Let's go take a look around the garden and see what's going on. There's some really cool stuff happening. Can we talk about these sunnies? Oh my goodness. There's so many coming in over here. This is the side of the greenhouse and something marvelous is happening here. 
I am super excited about these potatoes, y'all. Super excited. I feel like things are gonna happen really soon. They look great right now. They haven't died off or anything. They're so big and bushy. Um, and when they flowered, I was completely surprised. I had no idea that potatoes flowered. Um, they did set fruit. I did look it up instead of tasting it, which was smart because it's kind of poisonous. <laughs> look at this, look at this. So out of those beautiful blue and white flowers, um, one of my potato bushes actually made berries. So cool. I am told that if I let those ripen and then squish them, that I can start potato from seed. I might try it because science, you know, we'll see what happens. I was just astounded. Is my, is my potato plant growing tomatoes? What's going on there? No, I guess it's just a nightshade thing. Found a couple of elephant garlic that got left in the ground. Um, I think I was waiting to see the other elephant garlic that I pulled up, I feel like it was too soon. Like most of them only had one giant bulb. So I left these ones a little longer. Let's see what we got. Oh, hey. Oh, yeah. Well, the good news is they did split. Um, they did split and some of these cloves are falling out. It's just been so wet. We may have to use these up right away. Just, it's been so wet. There was no time to not water them for three days, then pull them out and lay them in the heat. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the thing that just isn't happening this year. So I'm gonna get these up to the front porch, which stays drier. Um, and let them sit for a couple of days and see what happens. They'll at least do better storing in the kitchen counter for a week. <coughs> that bird is gonna get me in so much trouble. I have to tell you, I wound up doing rooster apology cards and I need to bring them around the neighborhood. <coughs> or at least to my next door neighbors over there. I really like them. I'd like to stay sweet with them. Oh my goodness, look at this. You know what that is? That is another tomato volunteer growing out of there. We're just gonna leave it. Let's see what happens. It looks like those leaves are super tiny. That might be something interesting. Let's see what happens with that. Look at these leaks. Oh my goodness, I've got... <laughs> on top of my leeks. Just gonna clip these babies down. Turn them into part of pesto. Look at these tomatillos. There is so much fruit. And my tomatoes are looking good. We are a right proper tomato forest here. Come out early and I've disturbed all the little tiny bugs that like to play in the fog in the morning. <laughs> so yeah, the tomatoes are starting to come in. I'm so stoked about that. They're looking great. And <laughs> you know that first tomato takes like a bajillion to years to ripen up. So I'm just trying to be ever so patient ever so patient and just let these folks come into fruition. We need a few more warm days to get that happening, but I was a little worried because it's been so rainy, because it's been so rainy and sometimes that'll make your tomatoes split, but uh, so far so good. I think it's because it's been so consistent. <laughs> Look at these tomatoes, come on over. those sunflowers back there totally volunteer. I put in 
those two. Everything else, all the other ones just brought themselves to the party. How cool is that? <gasps> Baby Pablano, the best of peppers. So there's some empty space under the middle trellis where we took the spinach out. And outside of a volunteer tomato in the middle of the other trellis patch, there isn't anything there. So I'm trying to decide what I'm gonna put in over here. Direct sowing for me is always kind of tricky. So I started some carrots and trays and we'll probably do that here under the far trellis, but I don't know yet what I'm gonna put in to replace that spinach. Hello, cucumber. Hello, other cucumber. Oh my gosh, this one's ready. Howdy. And that other one is almost ready. We'll give that another day. Squash and the carrots and the beets are looking okay. Oh, and these carrots are growing up good. This carrot is an overachiever, y'all. It might actually be ready to pull. Got a couple like that. But I'm gonna let these go a little bit longer. With all the rain, the beets are starting to look a little bit washed out. We'll have to keep an eye on them. I feel like they're survivors though. Uh, my eggplant and that giant dandelion <laughs> are looking all right over here. These Turkish orange, have finally started to look like whole plants. I am just in love with these very tall marigold. These are Linnaeus burning embers and I just, I am just in love. Look at these beauties. And they have been so prolific that I've had marigolds on my kitchen counter for weeks now. It's just been delightful. These zinnias are just, oh, oh my word, look at the color. I have more tomato volunteers on the side of the garage. And this, this, I did not plant that. Um, looks like there are a couple, three of them in here with the okra. And uh, I don't know what it is. It might be cucumbers, it might be some kind of squash. It is, it's vining, so I'll have to see what happens with that. If it starts taking over the okra, I'll have to build it a little bit of a trellis to climb up. And then there's this. So this is our upcycled bed. One of those metal tubs from like Tractor Supply. Now it's on its third life as a garden bed. And I originally planted peanuts in it. Just peanuts. And clearly, something different happened here. <laughs> um, so we've got peanuts and we've got some kind of squash um, or maybe melon. I don't know, there is, there's all kinds of stuff going on down there. There's no fruit yet, so we'll have to see. But we got flowers and then I think there are either two or three tomatoes in here. And yes, there are still peanuts and a volunteer sunflower. So I'm gonna get on inside, start the coffee rolling. The boys will be up soon and they'll want that. Get this garlic hung up, see if we can uh, do anything with it. Put the scapes in some water until I make the next batch of pesto, which is gonna be soon. With all this rain, the basil is just bushy, 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 which is what we wanted. But um, that means I've gotta bring more in to keep it up. We don't want it to go to flour. I'm constantly struck 
with the understanding that I'm just here to manage it, that it is my responsibility to steward this, and I'm up for it. And I'm willing, I'm willing, because I am afforded a bounty in beautiful things. And noisy birds. So I'm bringing some garlic, put some scapes up. I'm gonna eat this cucumber. <laughs> this one's not gonna make it to pickles. I'm gonna eat this cucumber. Add my handful of beans to the bean box, my pocket harvest. I'm gonna be canning beans again today, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but the dishwasher is working again, so that'll make that easier. And for now, I'm gonna set up the crock pot because we've got some family coming over for dinner. Looks like I've got two more pints worth of beans, so I'm gonna process those this morning and um, just get on the day and tidy the place up for when the family gets here. So, and uh, I'm gonna get on that. So thank you so much for hanging out with me in the garden. We'll catch you up soon. Take care. Have a little bit of elephant garlic I'm gonna pull. It's, um, I have some noisy ass bird. Couple.